What's good, YouTube and Twitch? We have Nathan Strand, who has been playing uh, a few different strategies throughout the tournament, but mainly Heroes, versus Blair Hunter, who has been piloting ABC almost the whole way. Both are undefeated to this point. Uh, I believe uh, we're in round six, so both should be... Uh, or no, we're in round seven, right? So both should be 6-0, and oh, and trying to guarantee their spot in the top 16 with a win here. And what up? So the bottom, I believe, is Blair. Nope, nope. It, yep, it was Blair. So uh, I think the highlight is usually the bottom. And uh, he will be going first. So that is Blair Hunter as Commando, not Commonade. And uh, as the old D&D &D say. And he does uh, start off with a Union Hanger. Nathan complaining about not winning the dice rolls down here. Some table talk. I like table talkers. What up, Cam the Man, Neil? So Silver Gadget, pretty optimal start here and probably uh, highly insinuates the Tsukiyomi play is going to put Buster online. The quote-unquote combo is a Thrasher or this. You get the A, A will get B. You overlay, B gets the piece to hand. You make Tsukiyomi, which will pitch it to the graveyard. You'll have no matter what, two cards in hand after that and a Buster online. Combo. Special summon, summon one. Any, any special summon and hanger. And we've got sets. Ooh, very optimal. At least two sets. Uh, only one more uh, could have been the most optimal. And it looks like two pieces sent there. So, uh, A and B and C. Very nice. That's a, And so he keeps the A behind uh, Sook properly in case anything would be happening to it. So Desires as well. Man, it is a very nice, <laughs> nice opening hand, Thank. Oh, man. So kind of random, we've started going live a little bit more midday, but uh, I think the matches are all still pretty good and they'll end up on YouTube later. Let's see here, so we got an opening of, <laughs> this ABC is so busted, oh, busted sometimes. You have Buster, you have Suk, you have three, uh, maybe live back row and two in hand. With a hanger. But again, these could be not live because they could be sets just to avoid pitching. And then not have been of use. Like, it could have been uh, an instant fusion he didn't want to use yet. If he doesn't play Rafflesia. And we do have attempts. He's showing what he's playing. He's putting a Shadow Mist on board. So he must feel like he has some viable plays if he's doing this. Nathan says, okay, so, so it is good. Uh, there are five back row here, though. Ooh, and an instant fusion. Probably, if he has rare fish, he'll be able to use that instead of Norden. But dimensional barrier, probably going to call fusions here. And uh, just turn the instant fusion off completely. And he's going to chain his buster so that its effect can activate here. Instead of being locked and loaded on the field. Uh, who is playing? It's Blair, the card guy's own MILF Hunter, uh, against Nathan Strand. Blair is the ABC player, Nathan is the hero player. Blair looking in a pretty good position, but four back rows 
No joke, even uh, when you're going to overlay twice, uh, if there's three real back rows, that's three real problems. So he makes uh, one of his cards immune to traps here uh, to help against the Mirror Force cards and other cards, I assume. Ooh, Twin Twisters! Oh! So yeah, now he's going to be able to take care of everything no matter what. He's going to be able to uh, um, double Dire Wolf. Uh, the other two back rows and turn on busters on top of it. It's it's looking grim for uh, Nathan this game at least. He'll be able to go first next game though and try to set up with the heroes. So Dire Wolf going to take care of the first back row, then Dire Wolf going to be able to take care of the second. An Acid would still be pretty strong, but it's just not going to be enough here. Um, yeah, I have to say at this point, Blair just is completing his route since it's not being scoop phase. Uh, but there very well potentially could just be something silly. Oh, Dire Wolf going to get to stay to uh, Floodgate Trap Hole not having activated. And there is the Surrender. He packs it on up, seeing clearly that... Both back row are going to be eaten through. That uh, bust, uh, Two busters are probably going to touch down. We always like to take this time to thank our sponsors, ARG, Troll, and Toad, and PPG. Without them, we wouldn't have amazing free tournaments. No entry ever will be charged for the Zodiac tournaments. They will always be free. And for prizes, first place gets a box, a ring, a championship mat, and some other cool stuff like a two-round buy at the ARG series. Uh, second place gets a, a mat in their invite. Uh, third through eighth all get mats as well. And uh, their invite. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. All X2s will get their invites as well to the big one. And of course, there are always giveaways. We will have some Destiny soldiers for you guys uh, that give back to the stream. I believe uh, we'll be concluding that sometimes before Christmas ish and uh so there will be a pretty big raffle a whole box uh to give back to those of you who give to us and there's always other incentives like viewer battles uh and other stuff after these tournament matches where i'll sit down and play you guys if you want to give to the stream only two dollars for a viewer battle and you're in, you're entered into the raffle uh five dollars for some deck building fun you can choose our decks or help us have us help you build a deck uh, I may not know your deck uh, that you're wanting to build that well, but we'll figure it out together. And uh, $10, you control the entire stream for an hour. We'll start doing that again when I have uh, more time. Uh, like this afternoon, I would have time if somebody wanted to extend the stream an hour and uh, keep going. So a hero lives. Very, very, very strong card. And uh, we're going to get a Shadow Mist uh, out and a free mass change. So Dark Claw is already ready. Ooh, a 10 Goldfish. This is pretty awesome. So he's going to have... Uh, his totally awesome uh, with the Bahamut Shark and a Dark Claw. One of the best setups heroes can uh, have. He may be forcing Blair to game three. Oh, Blair's going to have to have a lot to answer these things. Because the totally awesome is going to slurp whatever he tries to break the board with first. And not just one, but two back row. But one of those has to be that mass change. Thanks for that follow, uh, Matty. Zodiac's been quite interesting today. So Photon Thrasher, a great start to this hand. Uh, but we're not trying to force a cure in here. Everything's kind of bigger than him. So it's going to have to go to the overlay section. And uh, Dark Law has not seen the field yet. So Terraforming going to activate. And we're going to see the Dark Law now. So only one back row to protect the Dark Law. But Dark Law being out now will prevent uh, anything to go to grave for instant fusion. Uh, if the XCs get stopped, it's out there. But Utopia, Utopia would be a very strong card against this field. Uh, 
Utopia the Lightning would be able to uh, get over uh, Darklaw and Toad. Ooh, and that Twin Twister going away, so uh, this back row probably staying. But any four into Utopia, you'll get to keep the materials um, and uh, be able to basically fight over anything that would happen. So once a Utopia touches down, if there's not a real back row for it, it's a huge problem for the hero decks. Hey, Ultimate Hum, go ahead. <laughs> I love the table talk, man. It's like Dian, like we have options. It's so reminiscent. I can't wait for Dian to get in. This guy's going to be a hoot. This is his first Zodiac tournament, by the way, and he is 6-0. And Blair has bubbled every single Zodiac tournament he's basically played in. And he's always gone out round 6 or 7. And there's that Utopia I was talking about. Very good option here, uh... Since it looks like there's no real back row, he's just going to be able to... Uh, no Mirror Force can respond to Utopia. Uh, these Toads aren't going to do anything to Utopia. Uh, the only thing Bahamut Shark is going to do is force its Detach. And then the Toads still can't get over or react to that de Detach. So, uh, these two, the Dark Law is gone. The problem is gone. His pieces can start going to Graveyard. And now, uh, Nathan is the one forced to find a way to get over this. While he only has 3,900 life points. Uh, but he does play rank 4 strategies. Oh, okay. So, uh, able to get rid of two of uh, Blair's options here with this Twin Twisters. And let's see what that back row was. It was a dimensional barrier that's not going to activate. That had to be a misclick. Oh, he, I guess he can't call Xyz because, uh, because he wants Utopia's effect online. But he still could have called Fusion just in case. There was no point not to call Fusion, but uh, total control by the hero player, and uh, he's not going to attack. He's not going to use Bahamut Sark's effect yet because it can't attack uh, if it for the rest of the turn it uses its effect. So you can punch in the damage first and then use the effect. And with two Toads to Blair's three cards, it's looking pretty bleak, especially with Utopia gone. So I think we will be seeing a game three. Nathan, very very solid, good play. Uh, Blair, excellent choice with the Utopia card. But just not able to force enough damage. I, I think there's not much you can do against the Double Toad. And there is the Surrender. Game 3 on our way! Alright! Good way to start off this day. Blair Hunter versus Heroes. 6 0 6 0 one of these players will be guaranteeing their spot in the top 16. And part of the fun match we always do for Zodiac. We let the players choose, though, if they want to do fun or serious. But no pressure 7-0 situation. Who will be our undefeated in Swiss? So one of these two people will uh, get the chance to play for undefeated and secure that spot in top 16 here. Very, very fun. Heroes versus ABC. The dominant strategy versus the... Fan favorite, so to speak. Heroes very fan favorite. <laughs> Unban Stratos, please. We're making this joke after seven years. Ah, but it's still funny. I'll always wish Stratos to be unbanned. <laughs> Just like Gateway. <laughs> Even though I didn't really like Gateway that much. I like the old ones. <laughs> I just want to summon Grandmaster. Troop Dupe Scoop! Would Trooper at 3 really be that bad? I mean, Milling 9, is that really that bad? You deserve it. <laughs> to the boom boom box! <laughs> if you all haven't seen the Yugi Mation uh, band camp, you need to. Heavy Storm, I don't know about that one. Japan does have Harpies, but uh, 
A lot of these tra traps are actually getting chainable and resist the entire turn, such as Dimensional Barrier. So you could see a lot of interesting plays and sets uh, with the threat of Heavy Storm. But I think these, uh, the back row heavy decks aren't winning the tournaments yet. Uh, the ones that truly rely on the back row don't seem to be winning, and I think there's a reason for that. So to hurt them even further, uh, just because you guys are annoyed by the deck, uh, annoying decks are actually good decks typically, but they they're usually going to fall out from under their uh, person. And Blair showing empowerment here, so he is playing empowered ABC. I don't believe we've seen too many aspects of that throughout this uh, duel yet taking effect, but we've seen Blair make use of that Pendulum Scale before, one of the few duelists to, to uh, use it before uh, pitching. You definitely always want to scale it if you can instead of uh, pitching. Ooh, there goes Regeki. So being able to use that Regeki turn one as a resource rather than it just being a dead card to wait in hand, but uh, if there was a play without Totally Awesome that just had Dark Law, that Regeki could have been very, very, very strong if his hand is weak. But he gets the C. So, what is this going to cause? Gonna get B. Gonna overlay. Buster will be coming out turn one. Blair seems to do it with all of his hands. How many sets, though? That is the real question. Because without sets, heroes can come back. But there are two. Oh, the most optimal play this hand could have... Uh, chummed out a buster and two to three maybe four sets depending if he doesn't want to have buster online to uh use its effect to pitch yeah you can see an immediate tag out happen uh it avoids system down because it'll keep two of your pieces on field yeah so he is setting everything he's likely just going to tag out immediately and uh, equip a B, and this will play around system down. And there it is. So now a system down would only hit two pieces immediately. Um, very good play. Two in defense, one in attack. These high de defenses also help uh, prevent being OTK'd by metal foes. Never summon your A in defense, kiddos. At least against metal foes. Against rank 4 options with Utopia, I can see it. Ooh, a hero lives paying half those life points already into 4 back rows. So risky, but I guess when you've got to, you've got to. Oh, baby. This man does not stop fighting, though. And Oh, 2,000 for 4,000, but then a 1 for 1. Now, if there's another hero lives, it can activate here. But dang... That 4,000 price point. Ooh, there's Regeki. Okay. So the B is going to protect C. The other two are going down. Unfortunately, he did not have a Dark Law to back that Regeki, and it looks like everything is going to activate here. He's going to add one back to hand and search one. Wow. I believe I got those effects right. Yep. So he adds the B because there's already a B on field. <laughs> Your Twin Twister is live now as he realizes. Well, if you draw it, you draw it. It may already be down. Blair could have... Uh... Oh, he's going to mass change this. All right. Nope. Well, he'll have it ready. E-emergency call hitting here. Interesting. Probably another bubble man. Very much saying that he's relying on his back row with those words, though. Uh, or he has to set these cards in order to make this play no matter what. Blair could be holding A for his Twin Twister here, though. It could be a wise point to activate it. Is there a strike? Nathan's calling for it, but he's calling for it because he knows that's what hits him. But no! It's the card Blair's made famous this format. Time Space Trap Hole. 
I know your whole deck. <laughs> but there is an instant fusion. Well, this man's is outplaying <laughs> a little bit. Wow, that was pretty good. This puts it back, so he has access to it. Hey, thanks for the host, uh, Grand Cheval Dungo. I'll have to check you out later, man. Wow, all right. So if you're new here, we're going with our tournament series here. And uh, we have Blair Hunter from the Card Guys. Uh, multiple uh, ARG wins. Several other things. You drew all your outs. You're not outplaying me. Oh, jeez. No one would win versus this. I mean, that's outplaying in the deck building and deck choice, then, Nathan. Uh, but not... R I mean... The table talk took a little bit of an ugly turn there. Come on, sportsmanship, man. Uh, but I get we're just talking about Yu-Gi-Oh and cards here. Bottomless, though. But Nathan surrenders, saying he's got it, realizing the Buster's already there. The, there's access to multiple things. And uh, scooping it on up. So very good games by Nathan and Blair. Nathan falling to 6-1. and one. Blair, for the first time ever, guaranteeing his place in the top cut of our Zodiac tournament. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please thumbs up this video to show your support. And please check out Vancole 40 for Cardfight Vanguard. M. Cole Games for miscellaneous trading card games. And No Limit Gaming for a brand new series of Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks for watching.